Hello everyone. Good morning, afternoon, and good evening. Uh, the title of my talk uh, would be uh, Internal Red Team Operations Framework, Building Your Practical Internal Red Team. Uh, let's move, move on to the uh, intro slide. My name is Abhijit. I'm also known by the pseudo name ABX. Um, right now, I'm leading offensive security operations uh, in a global uh, fintech company. Uh, formerly, uh, the deputy manager for cybersecurity as, at Nissan Motor Corporation. Prior to that, uh, I was working with EVA as a senior security analyst. So I have more than uh, 10 years of experience in the information and uh, security domain. I'm also the founder of uh, Red Team Village Community. Uh, no, uh, it is not associated with uh, you know uh, DC. I'm also acting as the uh, lead organizer at uh, Defcon Group Trivandrum. Um, I recently started running uh, a blog called tacticaladvisory.io, which is uh, dedicated to uh, adversarial simulation and uh, red teaming tactics. Moving on to the next slide. So let's make some things very clear first. I don't really want to do uh, an introduction about vulnerability assessment, pen test, or you know, uh, security assessments. But I just wanted to make some statements uh, very clear before we go ahead. So. Uh, a couple of things are there, you know, that just needs to be, uh, you know, clarified. Number one, vulnerability assessment, it is not red teaming. So you all know that, right? What is vulnerability assessment? So it's like, uh, you know, uh, if you are targeting a system application or a network, so we will be listing out all the possible vulnerabilities in there. And, uh, you know, uh, the POCs for the vulnerabilities, how to remedy these vulnerabilities, everything would be there. So that is what basically vulnerability assessment is. So again, vulnerability assessment, it is not red teaming. Uh, the next slide, again, pen testing, it is also not red teaming. Uh, I'll tell you something, uh, you know, uh, pen testing on the other hand, it is more focused towards a goal. You know, maybe we are targeting an application or infrastructure, our only goal would be uh, compromising that system and, uh, you know, get access to that system. So the pen testing report also reflect, it should also reflect the same rather than listing all the vulnerabilities. Uh, because uh, I'll tell you, uh, you know, uh, the reason behind that. So we are facing a problem right now. Nowadays, we cannot differentiate between uh, vulnerability assessment and pen testing reports. So usually uh, uh, vulnerability, re vulnerability assessment report, uh, we are expecting uh, it to be uh, having, uh, you know, all vulnerabilities which may be exist in the target system. A pendulum report, it may list all the vulnerabilities in the target system instead of, uh, um, you know, the exportation and how the attacker got into the system. Like, you know, the actual attack path would be there. So that would be the core difference between VA and pendulum report. So, um, you know, also I used to see external pendulum reports, uh, you know, with SSL issues only, like, you know, instead of listing down the attack path and how they got access into the system. Uh, nowadays, uh, the modern pen testing report, they are only, you know, listing a couple of uh, useless vulnerabilities. Not, I'm not supposed to say useless, but something like uh, low severity vulnerabilities instead of, you know, the actual exportation path. It is kind of confusing now, you know, we cannot blame uh, anyone here, uh, you know, uh, by quoting them, but it is, it, but it is what happening nowadays. I also uh, want to uh, point out once again, pen testing is also not red teaming. Next slide. So we have a very cool definition, uh, you know, from the redteams.net blog. It's like uh, historically, red team originates from the military uh, teams, uh, which would imitate the role of adversaries. Uh, you know, they will try to mimic attacks against the military bases or other targets. So based on the outcome, like you know, based on the findings uh, which they had revealed, you know, they would, uh, they would be increasing the defense and uh, security missiles at their base. So actually, uh, the, the term red team, it came, originally came from military background. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, another uh, explanation here. This is also taken from, uh, you know, redteams.net. So in case of, uh, that's, a, that's a very pretty, very, very, uh, you know, very, very simple explanation. A red team is a group of highly skilled people that continuously challenge the plants, defensive measures, and security concepts. That is that is pretty simple. 
So in case of pen testing, uh, you know, there is a well-defined target and a goal. Uh, it is more into goal oriented. For example, an application, when it comes into red teaming, uh, this is uh, very much full scope adversarial simulation. So the adversaries, uh, they could target infrastructure, applications or surveys, even employees, physical, you know, office premises, etc. So they will have, they will be having a set of objectives, very hardcore objectives, which will be focused on actual adversarial attack scenarios. Uh, you know, they will be working on, they will be working based on their goal, based on their objectives, but which is uh, not similar to pen testing. It's like, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, uh, this is like, you know, full scope. We are not uh, limited to perform assessment against an application or a server. You know, we are targeting the organization, you know, uh, in every aspect of its, you know, its business continuity or business uh, range. So this is also called uh, adversarial simulation uh, along with the term red teaming. Uh, you know, basically both are the same. That is what I believe. Moving on to the next slide. I think uh, you have seen this picture, right? You know, uh, for example, a security sales guy from uh, the security company called XIC, he's saying that our red team will be doing pen test and vulnerability scanning for the clients. So usually uh, the security services or sales executives, uh, they're doing this. You know, I'm not mocking anyone here. It is also very sad that many people are seeing red teams as pen test and test days. So by, you know, uh, by using the term internal red team, they are, they are actually meaning internal pen testing. That is not true. That is what I am, you know, trying to establish here. To explain the actual job along with red team professional, you know, for example, their title is like a red team professional or red team operator. So along with that, many many security folks are also using the term uh, adversarial simulation specialist or adversarial simulation, uh, you know, professional uh, in their, uh, you know, LinkedIn or resumes. So I have recently seen a couple of similar job titles in LinkedIn.com, uh, you know, uh, which uh, which is using uh, the title uh, adversarial simulation instead of red teaming or instead of uh, red teaming tactics or something like that. Moving on to the next slide. So I really wanted to, uh, you know, show off this image. Uh, you know, this is the perfect symphony between attackers and the defenders, you know, the blue teams and uh, red teams. So we created this picture uh, you know, for the for a CTF competition at a conference called Cocon, you know, which is one of the biggest cybersecurity conference in India. So it was created based on the uh, native Kerala martial art form, Kalaripet. Uh, this is something similar to you know other martial arts, but it is very old. Which is uh, you know it is traditional martial arts uh, in in our location, which is Kerala. I think, uh, you know, you, you like this picture, you know, we are also uh, allowing uh, this picture to be downloaded as a wallpaper. Maybe I, I can share you that link as well. Okay, uh, let's, uh, you know, coming back to the actual topic here, let's go and build a, an internal red team. So most of the things mentioned here, it is from uh, my own experience on the awesome contributors of the security community. So uh, let's say most of the computer, uh, I mean, so I'm sorry, uh, let's say most of the companies, uh, they already have their own AppSec and internal Pentas team, right? So what if they want to uh, move to a more matured attack simulation activities? So they are already, uh, you know, established their AppSec teams or internal vulnerability assessment or Pentas teams. So now it is the time to, you know, move on to a, a, a more matured, uh, you know, offensive team, a more matured attack simulation or adversary simulation team. So I think uh, this talk would be helpful for such people who are planning to uh, organize or, or implement uh, such kind of uh, internal offensive team. Uh, you know, here is a very quick uh, diagram. Uh, this is still a work in progress. So uh, we have created uh, something called internal red team operations framework, you know, which can be said as IRTOF. So we, we devised, uh, you know, the, the functions uh, or activities of internal offensive team into, uh, you know, five different phases here. I think, uh, you know, you guys seen this, maybe you guys have seen the picture from Superman movie or something, you know, uh, from the crawling stage, the flying stage. So uh, we, uh, I mean, we have used, uh, you know, uh, we took the idea from there and based on that, we have divided uh, the actual operations into five different steps. 
uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, I mean the very first slide of uh, IRTO. The face on crawling. So this is a very, very basic step of uh, IRTO and general team operations framework. Uh, let's say building from the scratch, building the team from the scratch. Uh, the very first thing would be uh, get the budget approval. So if you are planning to build the team, uh, you know, budget is always important, right? So you need the budget to uh, get the tooling, uh, uh, you know, hire the talent and all those things, uh, you know, uh, you need uh, internal budget to be approved. So get the budget approved and define practical goals and objectives. The objectives must be crystal clear because each organization has different set of crown jewels. You know, it may be their sensitive data or their assets, their formulas, you know, their IP. So it, 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 there is a difference between, you know, each company. So it is, uh, you know, the secondly, uh, you know, rules of engagement. That is also an important thing, you know, based on the organization and their, uh, you know, culture, work culture, that may differ. That may differ. It's like uh, also, you know, getting assistance from the legal department and management. That is very, very critical. Uh, then understand the secu the current existing uh, you know security posture of your organization uh, because in order to have an internal red team you need to find out what are the security measures or uh, you know different systems which is already there in your company already there in your organization it is always uh, you know not about owning the domain admin or ob obtaining uh, domain admin credentials it is always about the critical assets or crown jewels of of an organization uh, you know of your organization so the critical assets needs to be uh, identified. Uh, critical people needs to be identified. They are more vulnerable to an attack, right? So if we, all these things comes under understanding the security posture of the organization, existing security posture. And finally, hire the talent, aka the red team. That's a, that's one of the biggest step in phase on. Hire the talent because you need to you need to have uh, you know experienced people so, so that you can you know move on with the uh, team implementation right next slide i think you have seen this uh, you know series uh, the a team uh, that is very very awesome it's a very awesome series i, I really like it so uh, it's like uh, the team and skill set so this is the most important part to build an internal team because uh, just imagine you have everything you have tooling you have budget you have like you know office very very cool office premises but uh, you don't have uh, the that I mean uh, you don't have uh, the very skilled people uh, you know in uh, in in red team tactics or uh, adversary simulation. So th that is not going to do well, right? So this is very important. This is the most important part to build an internal red team. So just look at a team. This is how a team should be. The team must be diverse, skilled in different areas of attack simulation or adversary simulation. So they will have to work together as a team or work solo and work under you know excessive amount of pressure because you know you, you know this is very much important to uh, you know have the ability to work under you know pressure nowadays that is very important as you know like uh, Colonel Hannibal you know he is also a leader and has sometimes uh, he is also act as a solo player uh, you know he get things done single handedly the A team. They are strong individually and they are stronger as a team. So that's how a team should team should be. So each team member covers his teammates' weakness and you know other other issues and you know enhances them. The team should also contain non-technical people. Uh, that is also critical because just imagine you know a hardcore technical guy is writing a phishing campaign or phishing campaign email against a bunch of business executives. Because being technical people, uh, being technical guys, you know, we always have the tendency to use more tech jargon, right? You know, we'll be using a lot of, uh, you know, techno ways, in, you know, in our email. So, uh, if you are targeting uh, business executives or other other normal people, uh, it won't work that way. You know, they will find it very hard to, you know, connect to that mail, right? So, it is always important to have non-technical teams or non-technical advices within your team, so that you know. You get an extra opinion from an outside guy, and also you can use their skill set to, you know, uh, a, a handful of things. That is also important. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is the phase two of uh, IRT, your internal red team operation framework. Uh, it's like uh, 
so uh, we need uh, like you know a team external infrastructure uh, that includes uh, not only infrastructure not only cloud infrastructure we also need uh, you know domain names uh, you know uh, email services email hosting services so and so uh, that is uh, you know external infra is essential to mimic an adversary's action so that is very much important for the beginning uh, you know uh, just start with open source c2s open source uh, command and control service implants framework and other tools uh, mod we can modify this tooling uh, you know based on your requirement and uh, you know uh, that's what is what it says here you know corporate tools or improvise open source tooling capabilities so you know you should be able to modify a couple of existing open source tools and you know make it uh, very useful for your current your existing scenario next point would be uh, always be friends with your company's blue team or company's cyber defense team it is it is always uh, good to be uh, in a good very good relationship with your companies or uh, you know uh, blue team or uh, security operations team uh, because all of your adversarial actions uh, you know they are there to make the blue teams much stronger than stronger and enhanced uh, you know whatever you do you know that you are not attacking your own company right whatever vulnerability or whatever weakness or whatever misconfession you find so that is there to enhance the blue team's capabilities so that is very much important so once i try to be uh, you know friends with an organizations uh, you know blue team uh, you know aka security operation center i think uh, you know i had gone too far you know uh, that is not supposed to happen and uh, you know she is my girlfriend now is that is very funny to you know think so just take it an easy way you know uh, you can be friends with your blue teams organ uh, your organization blue team but uh, you know just keep it on a limit okay uh, this is just a fair warning from my end the next point so start with adversarial emulation using you know so called open source framework we have atomic red team here we can cadra here so it's like uh, you know mitra is your friend so they have all the resources in the world you know to help you with adversarial emulation and apt emulation so this would uh, help you to understand the detection capabilities of your antivirus and uh, edr products along with your uh, soc implementation like you know log pooling implementation so how much of these activities are being logged and being detected by your uh, blue team you know how many of these attacks were blocked by your antivirus how many of these attacks like you know sensitive actions uh, was blocked by your uh, edr software so these kind of things can be understand understandable from you know uh, adversarial emulation or apt emulation Uh, you can also validate you know current defense mechanisms with a uh, blue team uh, by the by the help of uh, mitra attack matrix the next point start with simple and pretty common phishing campaigns against your employees you don't have to uh, you know uh, don't have to raise the uh, like quality here just start uh, just start something simple maybe easy to uh, you know recognize uh, from the from an employee's perspective so just uh, just start simple and pretty common phishing campaigns Uh, you could just uh, classify the ranks of your employees based on you know their levels, right? And you can try various levels of uh, phishing campaigns against your companies, uh, like you know, organ uh, like employees. So it will help you to understand uh, the response from your victims. So so that we can validate your organization has a male or phishing size filtering of, for example, a web proxy, uh, you know, to filter uh, new or unrecognized websites. or uh, there is a mail filtering mechanism to filter suspicious emails so so you can validate all these uh, you know security counter security messages uh, by performing such kind of uh, phishing campaigns you can also use uh, these findings to improve uh, the the existing defense mechanisms uh, just keep in mind that both systems and the people uh, you know uh, it needs to be uh, enhanced like you know people awareness and uh, systems of uh, enhancement that needs to be done here uh next one would be uh, external attack surface discovery and mapping so we know that i think most of the people uh, you know they know this part so it is very much important to identify the internet facing assets of your organization uh, you know we should help the adversaries to gain a foothold into your network so you see it is always uh, a good thing to map the attack surface on the perception of an adversary you know 
then designing a remediation process to address issues. So that should be there. That must be there. You know, all these findings and all these issues. So this there must be a very well defined uh, remediation process to take care of all these issues. Now the phase three. So this is where uh, you know we begin to work as per our um, IRTO plan. So we can use improved tools, techniques, and procedures. So uh, we know about the current security mechanism uh, from the phase uh, one and two. So what if your organization is not allowing partial or any other scripts because you are trying something internal, like uh, you are trying to uh, you know uh, run some tools on, uh, like you know uh, assuming uh, using an assumed risk scenario in a user's laptop or a server. So what if uh, you know your uh, your organization is not allowing partial or any other scripts? So you can just try the next best thing, right? Uh, we should find the next feasible option. Uh, in this case, uh, we can try unmanaged PowerShell. You know, it may be the uh, defense teams are not considering the use of unmanaged PowerShell. So that is just the basic improvisation of existing tools and scenarios, just to make sure what is the actual limit of your uh, security products. For example, it is blocking PowerShell, but if you are using unmanaged PowerShell, we are, we are able to Execute partial commands, right? So that is not good, right? So by doing this, by you know doing step by step modification and uh, step by step, uh, you know testing, we can understand that what is the actual capabilities of our you know uh, security implementation. So try to bypass your EDR and antivirus software continuously. You know it would benefit the defense team and uh, systems very much. So that is also important uh, uh, to be considered in phase three. So from phase one to phase three, uh, we had identified the crown jewels and people, uh, crown jewels and key people, right? So these, I mean, there should be a vulnerable path, you know, which leads to the crown jewels or uh, the key people. Maybe that's a phishing campaign. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, that's some weaknesses in the in your active infrastructure, or maybe your cloud implementation. So whatever it is, the vulnerable path towards these, you know, crown jewels, it needs to be fixed. That is, uh, you know, that is uh, that is important. So next thing, evaluation of instant response process. So this is also important. Like, you know, what is the organization's process once it's uh, been compromised? How much time it did it take to uh, detect uh, the incident and respond to it? You know, the time um, the defense team, uh, you know, uh, taken to uh, contain the actual uh, incident, the actual breach. So that is very much important because. Um, we we always have to us uh, you know assume that uh, we had uh, breached somehow. You know that's a very best strategy out there uh, because um, also that is the importance of instant response process. Because what if we got compromised or what if we got breached? What if our data got breached? What is our next plan? How do we deal with this? So everything comes under this instant response process along with the roles and responsibility. So uh, uh, one of the goal of uh, the red team should be testing out the incident response management, uh, you know, uh, process. Okay, and uh, also we can perform automated adversary emulation and automated campaigns or such things can be done. And uh, we can also perform automated adversary emulation in random surveys and machines once in a while, just to assess, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the security teams, just uh, the blue teams, they are detecting capabilities. Uh, also, using the output of pre previous phases, uh, phase one, two, and now three, we could improvise and always make a new red team operations process documentation. Because from phase one and two, we have learned a lot of things, right? You know, uh, the, our company's existing. Um, uh, like you know, security mechanism, security existing cyber defense or security posture. So based on that, you know, we also did a couple of adversary emulation and uh, campaigns and all those stuff, right? So based on that, we have a you know very good list of uh, items with our you know in our repository. So using that, uh, we can create an improvised uh, you know set of uh, process documentation for our internal team operations. Moving on to the next slide. This is the phase on uh, IRTO start running. You know, this is where we start running uh, in our uh, framework. So the very first thing would be collaborative and continuous purple team exercise. 
I think uh, you guys already know what is Purple Team is, right? So we need to have continuous and collaborative exercises joining hands with our blue team. Uh, because, um, like I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, our uh, our our extreme goal is to uh, you know enhance uh, the cyber defense capabilities, right? So it is very important to uh, organize uh, collaborative and continuous purple team exercises and uh, enterprise to of course enterprise tooling capabilities. So bring in more tooling capabilities. You know many interesting platforms and tools are in the are out there. We should empower uh, you know the red team and both red teams and blue teams because there are many. Uh, ready-made tools, right? If you are buying, if you are like procuring that tools and uh, using it inside your organization, <coughs> you know, the ready-made tools. So you you can verify, like, you know, how much of these tools can be, I mean, the actions of these tools uh, can be detected by the blue teams. Because it's a ready-made tool, right? You know, it is supposed to get detected by the blue teams and, you know, our cyber defense software. So you can check that and you can also use uh, the the, like, you know, the enterprise tooling capabilities to uh, extend your operations, like, you know, on a wide scale. And, you know, targeted uh, campaigns against the crown jewels and key people. In the phase, in the previous phases, uh, we did some, uh, you know, pretty simple uh, campaigns against uh, the users just to make sure that what is their response? You know, are they falling to these kind of very simple phishing campaigns or, you know, are they reporting to, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, spam uh, reporting it as a spam or reporting it, uh, it to different team so uh, that things has been done there but here we can go for pretty focused and targeted campaigns against the business executives the leadership or the management so uh, we can ensure like you know how what is the percentage of the people or percentage of uh, the management folks you know who are vulnerable to phishing campaigns or vulnerable to targeted uh, you know uh, or spear phishing campaigns. So there are many, many awesome frameworks are out there. I, I would also always prefer to use custom, uh, you know, phishing campaign instead of using a framework because most of the frameworks and their headers will be detected by, uh, like, you know, the security meshes and you know it will get blocked. So always try to uh, make something from the from the scratch and try to, uh, you know, do it in a manual way so so that it will be more effective. So then, what physical security assessment? Uh, you know, it is like, you know, uh, over T is like uh, you're not breaking anything. You know, you're just uh, observing things and you're trying to find uh, physical security weaknesses. It is like identify the most important data centers, manufacturing plants, if you are, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, if you're into manufacturing, uh, processing center or anything based on your company's business. business. You know, it may vary ba based on data centers, plants and, you know, uh, business centers or so and so. So you could just go there officially and you can work around the premises uh, with the person in charge. Maybe, uh, maybe your supervisor, or maybe your teammates, or, or maybe the person in charge in that facility. So you can just uh, more, uh, I mean, roam around, observe the physical systems, and uh, you know maybe doors, locks, RFID, uh, you know entry points, uh, you know CCTV cameras, such things. So you can just roam around, and you can just perform your review in front of uh, you know the person in charge. Uh, that is called overt physical security assessment. You are not, uh, no, it's like, uh, you know, you don't get to break any doors or load. You don't get to clone RFID clones. Uh, maybe you can check for that uh, RFID, you know, cloning vulnerability or, you know, some kind of things, but you don't get to break anything because you are doing it in, in an overt manner, right? So just to do a review to identify the vulnerabilities in physical systems and report it. So that is what meant by overt physical security assessments. Most of the companies are doing it nowadays. So you can uh, refer the work of uh, Devian Olam uh, in YouTube. Uh, like you know, he's the uh, best out there. Uh, like in the, in the in physical security assessments. Uh, that is a very good, his YouTube channel. Uh, that would be a very good reference for you. So also continuous training process for operators and defenders because most of the organizations uh, they have their own internal training programs and certifications. Uh, for their employees, especially uh, the teams in offensive security and you know uh, in the cyber defense teams as well. So you you should also always have a plan to train your employees into the you know uh, I mean new certifications and new training programs. You should be there. Also, uh, proactive remediation process and plan because in the previous phases we did create a couple of remediation plans, right? Like you know 
uh, for example, if the red teams are coming with uh, a couple of findings, a couple of critical issues, that needs to be remediated within a, a certain amount of time, right? So in order to do that, you should have a proactive remediation uh, process and plan. So by, by the time we reach phase four, uh, because in the previous slides, we mentioned about creating a remediation process, right? So by the time we reach phase four, so it should be more powerful, like, you know, more proactive compared to the previous uh, remediation process. So uh, there is an operational security tip uh, regarding art security, phys physical security assessments. So do not, uh, if you are going to the, uh, you know, uh, your office, uh, I mean, your companies, uh, like, you know, uh, like uh, officers or in other locations, do not show up in a military apparel or, a, you know, or with a tactical backpack uh, or a laptop with full of stickers. So uh, do not, uh, you know, uh, go into the client side, uh, you know, wearing any of this. It raises a lot of uh, eyebrows, even if you are doing uh, an overt physical security assessment. Then just imagine about, uh, you know, how that would be if you are doing uh, an overt, uh, a, a covert, uh, you know, physical security assessment. So always just, uh, you know, make sure to trust accordingly. So I add to your phase five, welcome to the fifth phase. It is the time to blow your angel wings and fly away. So this is the step, this is the phase uh, where we would have mature the team operations. So uh, it's like uh, by the time you should have, uh, by this time, by the by you reach phase five, you should have, or you must have significant improvement in your organizational organization's security posture. Uh, it's like both systems and people, like, you know, um, the, the improvement of security, I mean, the security improvement, uh, you should cover uh, the people as well as the systems uh, in your organization. So, highly, uh, highly skilled operators, you know, uh, by the time you reach 5, five uh, you, uh, you should also have, uh, you should also reach a level where your operators are highly skilled in different set of uh, adversarial simulation and, uh, you know, the teaming activities. Uh, next point, well-defined purple team model to measure the progress of red team and blue team capabilities. So uh, again, this would help the management to understand the gaps which are there in the organization's security posture. Uh, there is like, what is the, what are the activities uh, done by the red team? What are the activities, uh, you know, done by the blue teams? What are the new weaknesses uh, which was uh, uncovered by the teams and uh, what is the actual coverage for the uh, blue team? So uh, there should be a very matured set of, uh, you know, uh, a panel, like, you know, let's say a matrix to identify, to measure the progress of each team and their component exercises. So it should be there by the time we reach phase five. Next point, uh, cover physical security uh, assessment. So you can also start doing the covered security assessment uh, by the time you reach phase five. So I have added uh, the covered assessment in phase five only because a couple of reasons are there. Some uh, organizations, uh, they have some difficulties to allow their employees uh, to do covered assessments. Uh, you know, the red team model needs to be, needs to gain uh, the trust and uh, uh, conference of the management. Uh, then you can move on to the covered security assessment. Uh, that would be a better approach. It is not, um, you know, uh, recommended to uh, like uh, jump into covered uh, physical security assessment from phase on or phase two onwards. Always just wait to, uh, you know, gain the confidence and trust of your management. Um, you know, gain some uh, skill in. Uh, I mean, put some skill into your team operations. Then move on to uh, uh, covered security, covered physical security assessment. That is always an, uh, you know, recommended model. So custom tooling capabilities. Uh, custom tooling capabilities in the sense, internally developed command and control, uh, you know, platforms, uh, custom implants, very specific exploits to, uh, you know, exploits, and uh, custom scripts to automate uh, the operations within your organization. So these capabilities must be there uh, by the time, uh, you know, you start to fly. And, uh, Continuous adversary simulation uh, to keep uh, the defenders on their toes. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, just consider it as a, a normal game. Right? It's a game, a regular game, uh, which you, you would play with your friends, right? You know, you guys are uh, detecting issues and uh, the blue teams are uh, enhancing the coverage 
and uh, you're coming with coming up with something uh, some something new like you know some ways to maybe for example some ways to bypass the edr software or some um, some uh, techniques to some tools or techniques to uh, bypass the monitoring capabilities of blue teams so just consult us a game you know uh, there should be a continuous rdc uh, simulation and emulation uh, to keep the different days uh, you know uh, updated or you know that is very important and uh, continuous rto uh, you know with well defined process so because we are uh, what what are we doing from phase one onwards we are creating we have created a rto process in phase one and phase two and by the time we reach each phases we are making it much better and better right you know we are just uh, you know sharpening it our uh, internal rto process so just repeat the process make this process a cycle uh, like you know continuous uh, team operations with a well defined process uh, just like i mentioned uh, in just like i mentioned earlier this framework is still a work in progress like you know there may be some things uh, which i am missing i will add more in, more stuff in, you know he, here to uh, make the framework uh, look much better it's like uh, uh, i'm also planning to uh, you know make some some kind of uh, uh, like you know model uh, to make it uh, uh, very much uh, use make it very much useful and uh, useful for the both the teams and blue teams you know so that they can build a team uh, internally and uh, monitor uh, the the progress so moving on to the next slide so this is also uh, very very much important we have strategic plans and tactical plans so strategy plans are focusing on long term objectives right so where the tactical plans focuses on short term engagement short term tactical engagement so you can derive a couple of tactical plans and chain them together to reach a strategic plan for example um, in here our strategic plan is to have a mature red team operations within your organization right so we can uh, you know to achieve that long term objective or long term goal you can devise a couple of tactical plans so in our case tactical plans are each phases so irto has different phases right phase 1 to phase 5 so each phases can be considered as a tactical plan so you know to reach a, you know a, a long a long term goal just take a tactical plan for example we are taking uh, phase 1 we can consider that as a tactical plan on so we are taking tactical plan one and we are giving it as time frame maybe let's say 3 uh, to 6 months for example so with, within 3 to 6 months we will be covering all the items mentioned in tactical plan on which is irto phase on we are calling right so the, all these uh, items all these activities listed in there we can take them and we can complete them on a time frame start with uh, you know start from 3 months to 6 months so after finishing that tactical plan we can move on to the next phase phase 2 which is tactical plan 2 so like that you know you can achieve your long term objective you know based on your organization's uh, current security posture and considering the business activities and other things you can always devise your own plan like you know how much time Uh, it will, it will, which is needed to, uh, you know, uh, have a fully matured team, uh, internal team operations, or fully matured internal offensive security operations. So you can set that as a strategy plan, like you know, a long term objective. And you can also use, always use the phase one to phase five, these steps to create tactical plans. And based on that, you know, we can move step by step, right? So that is the point of uh, creating uh, these uh, five phases of internal team operations. and uh, moving on to the next slide oh uh, now this is a time for uh, q and a uh, if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask me like you know i would be there at uh, you know dana initiative virtual booth online uh, by this time or you can just reach me on discord or my twitter account which is uh, abhijit pr and uh, yeah thank you everyone for uh, being here and uh, thank you uh, the diana initiative and uh, all of the organizers uh, you know who are working uh, behind diana initiative for this opportunity i i would also like to thank my uh, teammates in uh, you know red team village uh, and uh, defcom group trivandrum once again thank you everyone